A couple of viewers have been asking to show my loadout when I go for a day hike. If you're interested, keep watching. Okay, before I start with the specifics of what it is I'll be putting in my backpack for my next hike out, I thought I would talk about some of the variables that I consider when putting my items together. So to begin with, am I going by myself? Now more often than not, I am going by myself, but if I was going with somebody else for the day or overnight, then we can share some of the weight. There's not necessarily any reason for two of us to take complete cook kits and stoves and other equipment that we could be sharing in common. Number two is what's the time of year and the weather going to be while I'm out. So right now it's winter time and I have to consider what happens if I end up staying overnight for whatever reason and it was unexpected. Can I get by comfortably hopefully with the gear that I have with me? So that's one of the other considerations. Number three is where am I going? Now the area that I spend most of my time in is can be quite rocky, quite uh, hilly and quite you know wooded so it can be a bit of a, a, a tougher traverse. So I have to think in terms of exactly that. Do the, does the equipment I take with me allow me to do that comfortably? Number three is how long will I be out? Well this is a plan for a day, day hike only. I'm not planning for an overnight although I will have equipment that will allow me to stay overnight if I have to. So most of my day hikes are maximum eight to ten kilometers long and I plan to be back by dark but you never know. Something could happen that would prevent me from getting back by dark or getting back at all that evening so I have to have the equipment to account for that. And finally what is it I'm going to be doing that day? If I'm shelter building as opposed to maybe just making a coffee and sitting by the lake, the equipment that I take is going to make a difference as well. So for this video or for this hike I'll be taking some equipment that I'm going to be reviewing for future YouTube videos. So that's all the type of things that I have to consider. One more factor is the camera gear. That's an added weight factor a lot of people don't have to take into consideration but I also have to take the camera gear like my tripods and my camera and those types of things so I can make videos that I bring to you. Alright now that I've gone through those five categories let's get down to the tabletop and I'll show you exactly what I've packed for this hike. Okay so to begin with I don't know if the way that I load up my pack is what a lot of people do. Uh, I'll tell you right up front I don't keep a loaded pack ready to go for every hike. I like to empty my pack out completely and then each day that I'm getting ready to go for a hike I like to repack it so that I know exactly what it is I'm taking and have it tailored for what I'm doing that day and the other variables we talked about as well as exactly where it is. More often than not I don't forget anything. Occasionally I do but at least I know what it is I put in my bag that day. So it's a bit of a process that I go through to do that. But let's start with the basics. Now what I'm going to do is be talking talking about Dave Canterbury's five C's of survivability. I make sure that I always have those five C's cover and often in redundancy. And I know one of the things that he likes to say is two is one and one is none. And redundancy is something that you should consider. Now it doesn't mean you have to take two belt knives and two of everything to be identical but two things that can cover that same category in the five C's. So as I go through this I'm not going to lay the five C's out in front of you in any specific order but I will make sure that I identify that this is one of those five C's when I get to that other in, into that uh, area. Okay to start with what it is I have on me and what I mean by that is my clothing. My clothing is the first C that I want to cover. It's one of my cover elements. So the clothing that I choose for that day will be very specific to the season and the weather of that day. Now I do have other videos and if you're interested I will put a link at the end of this video talking about winter clothing specifically because it was a winter video when I made it and a lot of it is about budget winter clothing and things that you can do to stay warm while you're out. So clothing aside we'll now get into the other five C's. So number one on my probably I you know if I was to prioritize this I would probably say my fire steel my ferrocerium rod is my number one item. Uh, it probably cannot be left out of the of, of the other five C or the other things that are on my in my on my person. But in this case I consider this one of the most important things to have. Probably after this would be my knife and I'll talk about the knife in a second but I have a ferrocerium rod which I attach to my belt 
on a lanyard which goes in my pocket and it doesn't matter if I use this one or not I always have this one on my person. I do have a second one in a fire kit in my bag which I'll show you a little while later but the ferrocerium rod on my person gives me a sense of confidence if that for whatever reason I got separated from my backpack because I got down you know put it down and went for a walk or more likely hopefully not but more likely this time of the year is if I was out on the ice and I hit a th on the lake and I hit a thin patch and I went through and I had to dump my backpack and get to shore I know that I can start a fire with the ferrocerium rod I have on my my person so that's probably one of the most important things I feel at least for me right there with that is my belt knife now the belt knife that I'm taking for this trip is one that I'm just about to begin my outdoor testing on and this is the Dragur from Manly Knives out of Bulgaria. Uh, I'm not going to talk much about, I'm, actually I'm not going to talk all at all about this knife but it will show up in a number of videos uh, in the next, uh, next little while before I do a, a review on it. I, I really like what I see but again it's not about this one. If it's not this belt knife it'll be another belt knife. If it's a short day hike and I'm not going very far, I might even take a folding knife, but I usually have that backed up with another cutting tool. And we'll get to the other cutting tool. C number two that we're covering from the five C's is a cutting tool. Uh, a compass. I always have a compass in my pocket. Hooks onto my belt loop and it goes into my pocket. I always have it with me. I don't often need it, quite honestly. I know the area that I'm going in quite well. Sometimes I go off trail and go in and do some bushwhacking into some new areas and that's when I make sure that I count on my compass. I will oftentimes take a GPS, but a GPS is a battery operated device, so you can never be sure, even if you take extra batteries, that it's going to work for you when you need it. I more often than not take the GPS when I'm trying to record new hikes into areas that I haven't been before, so that I have a record of where I've been and maybe anything that I found that I want to get back to, I can mark it on the GPS and get back to it later. But a compass is always on my person. A watch. You know, I know there's ways of telling direction from a watch using the sun and the shadow. Uh, I just use it for the time, to be quite honest. It's just a, a timekeeper for me. Glasses. I need glasses for the finer detail work. Now, it, it's not that I, I can't function without glasses at all. Obviously, I can. But if I'm going to be doing any close work that I want to see finer detail, I always have a pair of glasses with me on a lanyard. And quite often I'll have a second pair in my backpack, a small folding pair that works as a backup to these ones. A bandana. Maybe I should have said this was my number one item, but I always have at least one bandana. This one will go in my pocket. Sometimes it doesn't come out, sometimes it comes out a lot. It's everything to me in terms of its ability to grab hot items, the ability to clean things up. More importantly, this is my first item that I'll reach for if I cut myself fairly seriously or even minor. Uh, a bandana is my first thing that I'll apply pressure to any wounds with and I have, have had to do that. So a bandana is always there. A notebook. Now a notebook is neither a survivability item nor a necessity, but it is a nice item to be able to sit down when you've got that brainstorm of something you want to do later or you find something that you want to record or make mention of or at least you know record the details of. Uh, a notebook is a great idea. I take usually my pencil during the winter, but sometimes my pen. Uh, I just like the way the pen writes, but one of the things about a pen is if it gets too cold it's not going to write, so a pencil will always write. And finally in my pocket is a chapstick and that's for this time of year. I guess I do take this in the summer as well because it is a, a sun protected sunscreen chapstick as well. But I can use this on my lips obviously. I can use it on my cheeks and my nose if I'm in a really uh, cold environment where it's windy to prevent uh, windburn. And I can use it to start fires if I needed to. I've used it fairly often for hot spots on my feet as a bit of a lubricant. So if I've uh, scraped myself either on any part of my body for that matter, this makes a great little bit of a covering to put over the wound as well. All right, those are the things I carry on my person more often. Now let's get down to what I carry in my backpack. All right, here's the backpack that I'll be taking on this hike. I know you won't be able to see everything in close detail. We can talk about providing more detail on the items inside at a later time. I just wanted to keep this video to a reasonable length. So what I thought I would do is this is completely packed the way I'm likely to cake it when I go out tomorrow or the next day. I will unpack it for you, show you what I've got inside. That just makes provides me a double check to make sure I've got everything that I need or want to have with me. And then I'll repack it before I go. So to begin with, this is a backpack 
pack that I reviewed a little while ago. This is the Helicontex Matilda and it's still meeting all my needs for a day hike and probably, well not probably, I know, I've got enough room left in this even now that I could put a few more items and it would take me for an overnight. But it's just a day hike I'm going on for my next hike so this is just packed up and you can see there's a, actually a fair amount of room left in this even so. So we'll work our way around the backpack. I'll start with what's on the outside, literally hanging off of the outside, and then I'll work my way into the three pockets, and then we'll go to the interior. So it's not going to be in any specific order. It's just the way I'm going to unpack it. Again, if it's a priority item, one of the five C's, I will make sure to mention that. Uh, so hanging from my backpack from a little uh, bean or a little hook is a little pouch with a spare pair of winter work gloves and i guess you can call that one of the five c's is a cover element but there's a few things that i always always take with me and it may change in the summer to the winter but there, i always take it so uh in the winter always a spare pair of gloves if you've ever gotten your hands cold and wet and by dipping into the water for whatever reason or just working in the snow and ice and your hands get wet and cold you know how virtually unable you are to function effectively with cold hands and yes i know there's ways of warming them up but it's just so much easier to have a pair of spare gloves with you and these will be they're a little heavier duty and a little bit warmer insulation so i can work with these and i have a little bit of a lighter pair that i'll use for the hike itself so uh that's one of the things i always take with me the other one is socks quite honestly i doesn't matter if it's a day hike or a winter hike or an overnight, I always have a pair, a spare pair of wool socks. It's all I wear, by the way, is wool socks. I do wear polyester or nylon liner socks inside of them, but otherwise it's just a pair of wool socks. And so I always got a spare pair of wool socks. Also on the outside, and it resides there all the time, is a whistle. So a little bit of a whistle for a signaling device. Uh, not a little bit, it's a good one. It's one of the Fox 40, uh, newer model Fox 40 whistles. They are loud and it's just on my shoulder so I can grab it without having to take the backpack off and use it. Um, not a necessity, actually just a nice little thing to have. And this is just one of those little eight power spotting scopes, a little monocular that I have here. Because occasionally I'll see something at a distance, whether I think it's a deer, an owl, or sometimes coyotes that I get to see. Then it's nice to be able to identify them, especially if I'm going to try to get a little closer to get a video of them. So that's right on my shoulder as well. On the belt of this, see if I can show you this. Somehow I may have to lay, pick it up from here. There's a collection pouch right here. This is one of those photo collection pouches. This is made of nylon and it is Molly compatible and it goes onto the side of the Matilda on the web belt just nicely. So that's on the outside. And on the other hip belt is the pouch for my cell phone. So is a cell phone a survival item? I just want to take that small the time to talk about that. Is a cell phone a survival item? Just a nice to have. What is it? It can be all of those things actually. Uh, where I go, I know I have good cell phone coverage. Now, I don't rely on the cell phone for communications because what happens if it's broken, the battery dies, those types of things. But if you have a cell phone and it's working and you get into a situation where you need to summon help, then that's probably one of the most important things you can do is to, that ability to summon help. So a cell phone does go with me. More often than not, it gets used simply as a camera and it, make, you know, it works very well for a camera. A backup video camera or just a still camera. So that goes there. Now, let's work our way around to the pouches. So I'm going to start with the outside, well actually still on the outside of, attached to it, is over here, my second cutting tool. So for the hike that I'm going on next, I don't expect to be processing large amounts of big pieces of wood, but I do expect to be batoning some firewood for stove testing. So I have my Terevis Grandma, and boy, this thing goes with me probably more often than an ax or a hatchet does because it serves so well. If the, I had one cutting tool, and I know this gets into a bit of a discussion, is there such thing as a one tool option? The answer is no, there is not. But if I had the choice of only taking one cutting tool with me, likely it would be this because I can do a lot of the things I can do with, my, with a small knife because it does have that fine edge on it and still have all the functionality of a large knife comparable to a small hatchet. So it may not be a one tool option, but this is, certainly covers a lot of the categories for me. Let me secure that back on. 
So that's another one of the five C's, the cutting tool. And I have yet a third cutting tool, almost as valuable, if not in many ways more valuable, is a saw. So this is my Silky Gone Boy 240. It's gone with me for quite a few years now. Uh, I have talked about these and I know other people talk about them. I haven't broken it. I have broken a couple of teeth off of it. And I have also bent the tip because, as you know, these are a pull saw. Uh, if you push on them, and sometimes they do just jam a little bit, if you push on it at all, you can bend the blade and snap it. So you do have to be careful with that. But a saw is so much safer for use when cutting large pieces of wood, especially, uh, now, uh, we'll take away the, the, uh, the aspect of skill. So skill being equal, this is a safer tool than an axe. Let's just put it that way. That's my opinion. You may differ. If you do, by all means, put that in the, in the comments below. But for equal skill levels, especially for somebody with a lesser skill level with an axe, you can't beat a saw. A saw is a very versatile tool. It's very energy efficient and weight efficient for that matter. Let me put that away. All right, so that's everything in on the outside of the bag. All right, let's start with the three pouches. So. Maybe you didn't think I was going to cover this as one of the most essential items, but it is, without question. First aid kit. Now, I've seen a little, quite a bit of discussion lately on first aid kits from people saying, you know, great big mass of first aid kits that take up a third of their pack to virtually nothing in their backpack. Uh, I'm somewhere in between, and it kind of matches what I'm doing that day. So the first aid kit I have here is comprised of two basic elements a cat bandage on the outside, or a cat tourniquet on the outside, because uh, it, nothing replaces a good tourniquet and the skill to use it if you've given yourself a major wound. The rest of it after that is small things. Everything from tweezers for pulling splinters, to band-aids, to duct tape, to some kinesiology tape, which is great to put over hot spots before you get a blister, or if you do, you can even cover it up. So a few things like that, and as well as a few medications. I think I've mentioned before, anti-nausea medications, anti-diarrhea medications, and pain medications. And if you have any specific medications for a medical uh, condition that you have, you should also have those with you. Not because maybe you think you'll need them that day, but again, what if you're overnight and you need them the next day? So that's the first aid kit I'll be packing. Almost as important, probably used more often, is my toiletry kit. So this has my toilet paper, uh, wipes, uh, uh, a lighter, a cigarette lighter, and some Purell, or you know, the, the sanitizing agent. That's pretty much what it contains in this one. Now, if it's an overnighter, I have a more extensive one, which would have my toothbrush and a few other items. But those are the things I need. Now, why a lighter? Because I burn my toilet paper. I'll bury my waste, but I'll burn my toilet paper. So that always goes with me. That's that pocket. That's over here. couple of things in this package. Yep, okay. Small fire kit. Uh, this is a small fire kit, but still it has redundancies. It does have the extra ferro rod in it. It does have a little bit of flint and steel uh, set in it. It does have some emergency fire starters in there, the quick tender type of things. Uh, yeah, and it does have a magnifying glass as well, one of the Frizzell lenses. I like the Frizzell lenses because, one, they work as long as you've got sunshine, of course, but they help me. One of the, it's also a bit of a backup for my eyeglasses, so if I got a splinter, it lost my eyeglasses, and I still need it to be able to see clearly, the lens does provide that as well. Still carrying the Uberlieber Tinderwick. Again, it depends on what I'm doing, but it's going to work well with this uh, video. And this is a bag of cordage, another one of the five C's. So I have spare cordage. I, I, Oh, you know what? I forgot to mention the cordage I carry in my pocket. I always carry six foot length of cordage right in my pocket as well. It has a bowling knot on one end. It has come in handy for things like hanging my backpack up or even just carrying a bundle of wood or bundling anything together. So there's a bit of cordage on my person. But I have quite a few choices of cordage in here. Some very fine bank line, some thicker bank line. I have a bit of wire and quite a few pieces of paracord in here as well. Yep, that's what's in that pocket. One more outside pocket. water bottle, and a dry bag, and, and they go together. Um, I don't 
filter water or purify water this year, this time of year with my Sawyer or any other filter because one, access to water is challenging. The lakes are frozen right now. I can find streams, so I could do it that way. But one of the reasons, or the biggest reason I don't, is because they, at least the Sawyer, and some of the others, if they get frozen, they're, they're damaged and possibly no, no longer effective. So I prefer just to take, in this case, one of the large clean canteens, stainless steel clean canteens with me, and then a dry bag for extra water, especially if I'm building the fire and I'm not right next to the lake. I have a means of putting the fire out if I need to. That's not to say that I don't sterilize my water, but what I count on is boiling for the most part. I do have a little kit where I put in some purification tablets, but for the most part this time of year, I count on boiling. If we had enough snow, which we don't right now, we just have a dusting. If I had enough snow, quite often the snow is going to be my source of water. So that's, well, plus the water I take out. Now, this is a non-insulated bottle. When I leave for my hike, I expect the temperature to be around minus six, but it's going to go up to around minus one, minus two. If I'm out for a long enough period of time, yes, this will freeze. So if I think, or if it's colder, uh, I will take an insulated water bottle, either a double walled water bottle, or I have other, I don't know what you call them, a, a, zip, a zipper top thing that's insulated that I can drop a water bottle like this down inside to keep the water from freezing for a longer period of time. Everything will freeze over time if it's cold enough, but that's what I'm carrying for tomorrow. Also, a container that I can purify water in it. If I didn't have the cook system I'm going to be showing you, because it's stainless steel with the top off, I can either suspend this over fire or put it directly in the fire in a nice secure way and have a way of making some hot water. All right, those are the three outside pockets. What I'm going to do is take a quick break to clear the table and then we'll break down what's inside the pack. Now right, let's see if we can move this video along a little quicker. Top outside pocket in, in the uh, top of the pack. For this hike, Catula Micro Spikes, and I do have a video on these things. These uh, get worn most of the winter for me, uh, whether it's snowy or just icy, because uh, there's nothing like preventing falls. <laughs> so Catula Micro Spikes, I don't put them on my boots until I encounter the situations that require them, but I have them right at the top of the pack. Let's open the pack up. Right in the very top of the pack. I know this gets into the 10 C's that Dave Canterbury talks about, but it's a candling device. This is a headlamp. Another headlamp that I'm, t I'm testing out from BioLite. And so far, I like it a lot. So this is the light that I'll carry. Probably won't need this if I'm back in time, but if I'm not back in time, it's essential to have some means of seeing what you're doing. Even if you're staying put, you still need to be able to see to start your fire. If you're going to try and walk it out because the trail is clear enough and you're, you're able to walk out, then uh, a, can a headlamp like that, much better than a flashlight or a handheld flashlight, which is good. This is just better. So I might carry a flashlight, but I'll always carry a headlamp. All right, opening up the double flap system on the top of the backpack. Right on top, not an essential item, just something I like to carry. It's a, just a canvas collection bag. You know, I could use this for melting snow and I'll do a video on melting snow uh, at a later point, but this is just a nice canvas bag that I use for collecting edibles, birch bark, anything that I see along the way that goes with me. Oh, you know what? There is something I missed in the top flap. Garbage bag. One of probably a couple of garbage bags in here. Now, why garbage bags? Well, my own personal garbage is going to come out of the woods, but quite often if I see garbage that somebody else has left behind, if I have my bags with me, which I try to always have, then I'm taking other people's garbage out as well. Right in the very top, spare clothing. In this case, this is just a small, lightweight down jacket. You can see it's very compressible invaluable. So when I go for my hike, I don't have this on me. It's in the top of my back because you're going to build up a little bit of warmth as you hike anyway. But the moment I stop and set up for whatever I'm going to be doing for making lunch or whatever, then quite often that's when you start to chill down. So this is right in the top of my pack. I can reach in and put this on. A 
wood stoves. In this case, two wood stoves. One that I'm going to be doing, a well, both of them I'm going to be doing reviews on. It's also been mentioned in the past, and this is the Brennerly uh, Hobo stove, as it's referred to, as you may have seen it in another video. This is a stove you have not seen, but I've done quite a bit of testing. I'm not going to say any more about it now, but it will be coming in an upcoming video. And along with that came the accessories that came with the Brennerly. So that's my wood stove for the day, or two wood stoves for the day. <laughs> Comfort item, not a necessity, but you know what? I do like my comfort, especially as I get a little older. This is a hammock chair that I can, I have an A-frame, well, in a couple of spots, I, you can, any two sticks or any three sticks to put together can give you a tripod that you can use as two sticks if I lean it against a tree or a rock, three sticks if I want it freestanding. So that's my hammock chair. Comfort item, but I like it. Cook kit. So this is a complete cook in kit inside. It's an 1100 milliliter titanium pot that I bought for myself off of AliExpress. I have been using it. I will review it at some time. And inside of that, I do have a Trangia alcohol, alcohol stove and a few other items. But there's my cook kit. So I guess you might say that's another one of the five C's. Probably the primary one of the five C's for boiling water and purifying water with is my pot. My food bag for the day, and this is an inexpensive, you may have seen this before, this is an inexpensive lunch bag from the dollar store here in Halifax. And what it provides me is a great little cozy for rehydrating uh, freeze-dried meals. And that is exactly what I'm going to be having when I'm on my next hike, is another one of the Happy Yak meals. This one will be the Bengali rice. I'm kind of looking forward to trying this one out. Everything else they've uh, produced has been great, so I've enjoyed it. But along with that, I'll be taking coffee. Got to have my coffee. I have a little container that I keep my Rampage coffee in, and uh, I'm not sure if I'll pre-grind it. I may just well pre-grind it first thing in the morning so it's as fresh as can be. That just m means I don't have to carry the grinder with me. I have a new titanium spoon, a Christmas present, a long-handled titanium spoon. Yes, I still love my wooden spoons, and I still carry those, but this was given to me as a Christmas present, so I thought I'd give it a try. And I have granola bars and hot chocolates as backups and snacks along the way. Put that away. It's kind of like reaching into your Christmas sock. There's the spare socks I mentioned. These are in a little dry bag. You know what? They, they, I don't know if they've ever come out of that dry bag. I've never had the... Op well, I guess that's not true. One time I did where I went through some thin ice and got soaked up to the knee. So I just stripped off the, my boot and dried it out as best I could with my handkerchief and then put on my, one of my spare socks to, to make it more comfortable on my feet. And, you know, if you keep walking, likely your feet are going to warm up anyway, but it's nice to put a dry sock on right away. So there's my spare socks. My eating kit is up for the day. So this is the GSI Fair Share mug, and inside I have the GSI Infinity coffee cup, and inside of that I have a little GSI. I'm not quite sure what it's called. It's a coffee pour-over type of a coffee device, and it just nests all quite nicely together. I could be a bit more traditional and use a wooden carved one, but for this hike, this is what this one will be. And it's a bit lighter and compact that way spice kit that should have been inside the food bag. Okay, we're getting down there. Back to the cover elements again. So the redundancy that I have after my personal clothing is this. And this is a one tigress poncho, sil nylon poncho. It is big enough to use as a small one person tarp and I have it guidelines and tie outs already on the poncho because it's as likely to be used as a tarp as it is a poncho as well as some nice quality aluminum steak. So that is my second uh, cover item down at the bottom of my bag. And you know what? We're pretty much there. What's left? Something I started carrying with me. It's, it's nice to have something like this. This is a piece of old barbecue cover. Don't throw them away before you get your new one. And it's rubberized on one side. And you know, this folds down to a really nice, small, compact size. If you're laying your stuff out, especially on wet ground or snow, it's nice to have something to lay it on. And that's what I started carrying this for. 
This thing actually does reside in my bag all the time. It's a piece of those interlocking puzzle-like mats that you see on, you know, quite often and people put them on the floor and they can come in different colors or workshops. So this is a piece of an older one. This resides because if I'm not taking the hammock chair, then I'm going to be taking, well, okay, this always goes with me. Something like this one. And in this case, this one is, fits in my backpack nicely. Keeps the old knees from getting wet and sore when you're on the ground working, making your fire or cooking your meals. But it keeps your butt warm and dry as well if you just lay this down on a wet log or a rock as well. So I wasn't taking the other items. I would still have this that I could count on. So that will just slide right back into the backpack right now. Now that's the contents of the backpack. There is one more item that I have. It's strapped to the outside. It is a comfort item for sure, but it sure is nice. And this will have appeared in a couple of videos. And this is my mat that I have made with a wool blanket and some waterproof nylon on the outside. And I can unroll this and sit down on the ground and it keeps me quite warm, allows me to sit there. Now with the hammock chair, what's cool about it is I can lay it in the hammock chair and it will keep my backside and my lower back warm as well. Because like you know, hammocks, they tend to make you cold because they compress all your insulated layers and then the cold air, the convection carries away your heat. This prevents all of that from happening or I can sit directly on the ground. If I had to stay out overnight, this would be my under layer on the ground. I could just build up some more materials like boughs, fir boughs, spruce boughs, whatever I have, lay this on top of that, and this would give me that extra protection from losing my warmth through the cold to the ground. You know what? That's everything I have. I don't think there's anything I've forgotten. Uh, there may be things that you do differently, but uh, let's wrap this video up. So that's my backpack loadout for a day hike during the winter. It's what I like to carry along and a little bit on the process I go through to decide what items I'm going to carry. Now, I suspect that there's as many different ways of loading out your backpack as there are people with backpacks on them when they go out in the woods. I'd be interested in knowing what your thoughts are on what I have, what you would carry differently, what you may leave at home, just your general thoughts on loadout, especially for the winter. Okay, that's all I have for you during this video. If you have those comments, please put them in the comment section below. I'll put links, I think, to a few of the items I have here and certainly links to the videos on those items at the end of this video. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled. It'll make all the difference. Bye for now.